this is the best place to learn more about and share innovations that help drive education forward. This session will focus on education equity during a crisis. How can effective leadership mitigate the global challenges? I'm Natalia Mitova from Bulgaria, and I bring over a decade of experience in education policy, education technology, and investing for impact. I'll, I would like to give the floor to my new friend and co-moderator, Wendy Ng from Singapore to introduce herself and tell you more about the structure of this session. Hello everyone, so exciting to see everyone here. Hi, I'm Wendy, I'm the country lead for 100 in Singapore. I'm so excited to be part of the 100 Summit this, this year. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share more with you. So a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I started my career as an educator in Singapore. So I've been teaching in Singapore and Japan and developing learning programs for many years. Um, so I strongly believe that every child should have the right to education that will help them to flourish in life. So I look forward to discussing more with you today. So before we start the session today, let me share with you some simple housekeeping rules so we can have an enjoyable session. Uh, this session will be 45 minutes. Uh, we will try not to overrun, but if it, get, it, get, if it gets too exciting, we might you know, exit a bit. Uh, it will be divided into two parts. Each of us will have a short sharing. And after our sharing, we will have a short conversation in breakout rooms where you will join and meet other attendees. Feel free to use the chat throughout the session, ask questions, leave comments or ideas that come to mind. Um, if you are experiencing low connectivity, feel free to turn off your camera. And lastly, join the conversations network and have fun. So let's start the conversation now. Um, I will hand it over to Natalia first. Thank you, Wendy. Exciting. So as a matter of background, we'd like to offer some data on poverty, poverty induced by COVID. Give me a second, we're experiencing some technical difficulties here. There you go. So the impact on COVID-19 on global poverty. For the first time in 20 years, poverty is likely to significantly increase due to loss of jobs, economic stagnation, decreases in productivity, and unprecedented loss of human life. The COVID-19 pandemic has increased extreme poverty by between 88 million and 93 million people in 2020, as you can see from this chart. Now, why is that important for education? Poverty indicates a limited resource environment and substantial barriers to academic success, including limited access to learning and schooling. What you're seeing right now is what I call photo of the year in Bulgaria. You're seeing the Bulgarian prime minister, sorry, minister of education, trying to convince an economically disadvantaged Roma family to send their children to school so that they may have a future. Poverty and illiteracy create a vicious cycle that can only be overcome by targeted effective education efforts. Now, to spotlight this learning crisis, the World Bank and the UNESCO Institute for Statistics have coined a new term, which is learning poverty, as a measure of the deprivation of schooling and learning across the, across the globe. As a result of extended school closures and ineffective delivery across education systems, millions of children around the world are now facing learning poverty. The COVID-19 crisis has further exposed the weaknesses in education systems and is calling for urgent action. What you're seeing here on this chart is that learning poverty will increase from 53% to 63% for children in low and middle income countries. What this means in real numbers is that out of every 100 children in these countries, prior to COVID, 53 were already facing learning poverty. And as a result of COVID, 63 will be facing learning poverty. That is 72 million more primary age kids will be learning poor. COVID has also introduced a learning loss for students both academically and, of, and from a socioeconomic standpoint. Learning loss during the pandemic equals 6.8 months on average for K to 12 students. In some countries, this, this is close to a full academic year. 
Now, while learning loss has been experienced by all across the board, it has been unequal. In the United States, a report has pointed out that distance learning has caused a significant setback in achievement, particularly for Black and Hispanic students and students with disabilities. In Bulgaria, the Ministry of Education issued a national study on the effects of online learning during the past academic year. And that report has shown that online learning has disproportionately affected poor students. For example, seventh graders in 2020 experienced a learning loss relative to the 2019 cohort in the following ways. Those coming from educated families experienced learning loss, but in a minor, uh, in a minor percentage. 1.4, 1.5 in math and reading. However, those coming from uneducated families experienced significantly higher learning loss, 10 times higher, in fact. The report also found that COVID-19, specifically distance learning, deepened pre-existing inequalities and increased dropout rates. As, as a matter of fact, the World Bank has been calling this a silent and unequal education crisis or a crisis within the crisis, because inequities existed prior to COVID, but they've gone deeper and larger following the crisis. The World Bank introduced a key report about overcoming learning poverty, and it is calling for key policy actions in five different domains. These domains include making learners more engaged through a variety of actions, having teachers facilitate learning in a better way with a view to the needs of the individual learner, making learning resources adequate and diverse, making schools safe and inclusive, and better managing school systems. You will have access to the full report in the chat so you can deep dive on your own later. We're just mentioning these pillars to pinpoint some key actions that can be taken by local and national governments to overcome the effects of COVID on education. Now, within two minutes, we'll have you in breakout rooms discussing this very same question. What are the system level policies that, that can mitigate inequities? And as a matter of background, I would like to suggest some uh, interventions or some programs that have emerged uh, across the world to address these very same issues. Number one, addressing the digital divide, ensuring internet connectivity for poor students and those in rural areas, having an equitable distribution of devices. Focusing on teacher professional learning and support, honing in on digital skills, providing coaching, having hotlines for support, focusing more on students' social emotional learning and supporting teachers to do that. And of course, providing support for, mental, for teachers' mental health. Digitizing the system, making digital content available on demand, having online platforms where teachers can co-create and share educational content and digitizing administrative processes to make it possible, possible for distance and hybrid learning to be effective. And introducing adaptive strategies, having greater flexibility in learning and schooling to adapt to learner needs, and have targeted programs to address learning gaps, such as an extended school year, summer schools, tutoring, etc. Now it's clear that to tackle educational inequities, will take long, a long and, and sustained effort on behalf of national and local governments and in fact, all stakeholders. And unfortunately, there is no quick fix. Having in mind what we've just introduced as background and some basic ideas or some of the starting ideas for the discussion, we're now inviting you to join a breakout room which will distribute you into in just a matter of seconds. And your question for discussion will be, what can policymakers do to address educational inequities? Well, thank you for sharing the insights despite a very short um, session that uh, time that we have been given. Um, so now we will move on more to a my, um, micro view of looking at the school system. Um, I think we all agree that school leadership and management plays an important role during normal times and especially during a crisis. So from the World Bank report on key policy actions that Natalia shared just now, uh, there is a great emphasis on school systems. So all these desired goals that we see on the slide require schools with effective leadership and management structures. For an education system to be well managed, school leaders like principals, directors, and head teachers must play a critical role, crit critical role at the school level. So COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of their role in seeking innovative solutions in challenging times. 
School leaders should have the tools to manage with autonomy and receive professional development opportunities to build their leadership capabilities. Um, and you can see um, in the last part of the slide, uh, school leaders' roles need to evolve from performing conventional administrative duties to becoming pedagogical leaders. So the question we are exploring today is, how can school leadership and management do to ensure the school is providing effective and equitable education? In my short sharing today, I would like to focus on one key area that school leadership should invest more to tackle the issue of educational inequality. We can explore more areas later during our breakout conversation after my sharing. So one main key area about school leadership and management that they can do better and do right is teacher professional development. In the just launched 100 Global Collection 2021, teacher professional development stands as a top priority for education innovators in 2022. Quoting from the report, strengthening teachers' professional development has proven essential to cope with the challenges in education today. And school leadership has to support teacher professional development to support teacher, teachers so they can make changes at the classroom level. To look more closely at teacher professional development, 100 in partnership with the World Bank with support for Global Partnership for Education launched the Teachers for a Changing World Spotlight. So on this slide, you can see some key takeaways from the spotlight that aims to promote impactful and scalable solutions that support teacher professional development. And I would like to highlight one of the programs in the spotlight, Global School Leaders. So this nonprofit organization based in India provides professional development to school leaders to transform the focus of school leaders from administration to, imp to improving teachers' performances and students' lead learning. So here they have established four leadership domains based on the common traits and practices of desired school leaders. So leading, uh, leading learning, leading people, leading for equity and leading school improvement. Um, when school leaders are supported with proper professional development, they can be empowered to work with teachers and teams in schools. Um, I would like to move on to another area that is probably commonly overlooked that school leadership has to pay more attention to, which is mental health and mental wellness of teachers. Uh, in a recent worldwide survey in Singapore, more than 80% of teachers said that their mental health has been negatively impacted by their work during the pandemic. Um, teachers cited long hours, lack of work-life balance, and excessive workloads. And as a result of the pandemic, teachers are facing increasing responsibilities, duties, and uncertainties. In another report, teachers talk about burnout where mental health is at an all-time low. Some teachers also share their problems seeking help from school leadership, especially with the stigma attached to mental health issues. Quoting one teacher, she said, when we express our stress and mental exhaustion, we were simply told by our school leader, teachers should just learn how to manage their own stress. Um, the Singapore government recently planned to roll out measures to better care for the well-being of students in schools, which include giving all teachers enhanced professional development or, on mental health literacy. However, it's essential that teachers' mental health is also taken care of so they can better care for the well-being of students. I think we all agree that teachers who are stressed in survival mode cannot cater to students' needs, and this will in turn widen the existing educational gaps. All right, so I think I've spoken enough. Um, so now uh, let's go on to really the question we might like to look at today. How can school leadership, um, what can school leadership do to address educational inequities? Sorry.